Today we're talking all about click tracks within Pro Tools. So, how do you actually create a click track? How do you actually modify the click track sound, like change the tones that it creates? And then how do you modify your session's tempo? We're going to talk all about that in this tutorial, so if you want to discover that, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. Before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about how to create a click track inside of Pro Tools. So of course, click tracks are very important, especially in modern day music, because we want to make sure that we are playing in time. So not only am I going to show you how to create a click track, I'm gonna show you how you can make some modifications to the sound of it also. And then of course, how we can also modify the tempo of the song to make it be what it needs to be for your song. All right, so before we get to that, I do wanna mention I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Pro Tools training playlist. So in this playlist, it contains videos ranging from beginner to advanced level. And if you guys want to get better at using Pro Tools, you should definitely check out this playlist after this video. So that being said, let's get into this video and talk about how to create a click track in Pro Tools. All right, so there are two ways to create a click track in Pro Tools, but there's only one way that makes logical sense. So if we go up to the track menu in the top left here, where my mouse is at, click on that. We go down to create click track, click that. Boom, you got a click track. That is the easiest way to do it. Now, if you notice there, there is no keyboard shortcut to create a click track, which, you know, I think is kind of dumb, but you know, whatever. That's just the way you go about creating it that way. So the other way is to create a mono aux track. So I launched the new tracks window here with the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift N on a PC, and on a Mac is Command Shift N. So we're gonna do a mono um, aux track. Okay, we've got our aux selected there, and we'll just call this click two. Okay, so the click track plugin is actually, well, it's actually a plugin. So we can go to our first insert here and go to our plugins. And then we can go down to, I believe it's instrument. Yeah, so we got click two here. So you got the same concept, all right? So that's the other way you can create a click track, but as you can see, that's a much longer way to do it, and I don't recommend doing it that way. All right, so let me actually just mute up this click two here since we're not gonna use it. And why don't we take a listen to click one here so you can hear what the default click sound sounds like, all right? So let's give it a listen. All right, so that is our default click sound, which is the one I use all the time. I'm happy with it, but you might not like it and you may wanna change it. So if we open up the click plugin here, we have a couple options in here. So one thing I wanna point out under beat here where it says follow meter. So having the follow meter button selected gives you that initial downbeat accent, which I love to have, because I like to know when you know each measure is restarting, okay? If you get rid of that, if you deselect it, it's you're not gonna hear it anymore. So let me actually play it now and all the notes are gonna sound exactly the same. All right, let's take a listen. All right, so as you can see, we don't have that initial accent of beat. And for me, that's a little bit hard to work with. And you know, I would imagine a lot of people that's the same case, all right? So I don't like to do that. So I'm gonna leave follow meter checked. So in our section below, we have click one and click two, and you have individual volume faders for each. So click one is basically your accented click, and then click two would be basically two, three, and four, all right? So you can also change the sounds of each of these. So if you look at all the different options we have, we have bells, blocks, classic, miscellaneous, other shakers, and there's also many options underneath each of these. So I'm not gonna change these because you know we would take a long time going through all these. My suggestion is if you don't like the default sounds, go in here and then play with them all and find the ones that work best for you, all right? 
So one thing that I wanna show you guys also is that if we turn off follow meter, I know I told you guys to turn it on, uh, we get access to these different notes down here. So we got like an eighth note, we got a 16th note, we got a half note and a whole note. So I could start changing these up here and creating some different weird combinations of how this metronome will work. I never ever use this, but you know, I'm not everybody and you may find this useful. So I'm gonna play the metronome now and I'm gonna start adjusting these and you kinda can hear how these work, all right? So let's give it a listen. All right, so you guys can get the picture there. You could do some interesting stuff with your note combinations there. So that is pretty much how you use the Click2 plugin. So before we end this tutorial, I do wanna show you guys how to actually set the tempo of your song. So as you see, we have the BPM 120 right here. And as you see, we can't actually change this in the plugin. We have to go up to our tempo section, which is located right here where my mouse is at in the kind of top left-hand corner, all right? So if I expand tempo here, you can see our whole tempo section here, which you don't really have to do that. You really just need to hit this little plus button right here. All right, let's click that where it says add tempo change. So wherever your cursor is at, so my cursor is at the very beginning of the song, this is where the tempo change is gonna be inserted. So in most cases, you just want to have your cursor at the beginning because your whole entire song is just gonna be the same tempo. All right, so just keep that in mind. So. Right here, this is where we would change it. So if I want to make this 100, I can change it to 100 there. And as soon as I hit OK, it's gonna change it right here. So check this out, bam. So we changed it to 100, okay? So that's how you set your tempo. Now, one other thing you can do in your tempo window is you can highlight this here and you can tap the T, the letter T on your keyboard. So check this out. So I'm just kind of tapping here. So if I was tapping this to an actual song playing or somebody playing something on a guitar or drum beat, this is me tapping out a tempo, all right? So you can simply just highlight the BPM right here and then use the T key on your keyboard and tap out the tempo if you need to figure one out. And that's pretty much all there is to setting a tempo and using the Click2 metronome plugin within Pro Tools. So. I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.